Hi, and welcome to my video about designing a simple line follow robot. I'll try to cover every step, making the 3D model and the PCB, choosing the hardware, designing the circuit schematic, and implementing a control system. To begin with, this type of robot is one of the simplest ones, and provides an opportunity to get into the world of robots. It follows a line or a path determined by the user and has several medical, industrial, and home applications. In this case, I have designed a robot for a contest, which won 4th place. The rules were simple, it needs to complete a circuit by following a black line on a white surface while competing to get the lowest time compared to other robots. After 3 rounds, the fastest robot wins. Therefore, to follow these rules and stay on the given track, the robot's motors don't run at full rate, but rather at 60%. In the context of this track, which has a length of 188 cm, the average speed of the robot is 1.09 m per second. As for another with more curves, which has a distance of 322 cm, the robot will run at 0.75 m per second. Of course, as for my first robot, these numbers can be increased by modifying the design, the code and others. So the purpose of this video is to introduce on how to make a simple working model. You also need to know that the hardware, the electronic components, motors, wheels and battery cost around 100 euros. In this model, I use a personalized PCB to replace the breadboard. 5 such pieces cost 10 euros. As for the other 3D printed components, the printing duration was around 5 hours. The design of a line follower is pretty simple. It starts the PCB, which replaces the usual breadboard and has a thickness that can ensure resistance to shocks and the support of other components, such as the motors and wheels and the battery holder. Here can be seen the battery holder that connects the PCB to the sensor array support with the help of 2.4mm thickness cylinders, in which are mounted screws of 3mm diameter. Finally, the sensor support has attached both the sensor array and the ball caster wheel. This is the first completed line follower model. It is rather long, designed as a racing car, reaching almost the maximum dimension specified in the competition rules, having 18 cm in length and 20 in width. Its longer shape offers more stability and control over the track. After several tests, this model won't take the minimum curve of 7.5 mm due to the angle of rotation of the robot. Even with an implemented algorithm that makes the robot turn 180 degrees without changing its position, it couldn't manage to take that turn with moderate speed. So I've made a second design, which improves the quality of all 3D printed components. It also reduces the length of the line follower model being now 12 cm in length. With the help of the algorithm implementing the first model, he can now take even the 7.5 curves at 1500 rotations per minute. You can see here the first line follower model in action. He struggles to take the tightest curves and seems out of control on a narrower track. You can find the showcase of this model in my first video regarding line followers in the link in the description. Compared to the previous model, this second design of the line follower doesn't encounter any difficulty and moves smoothly on the track. It has a higher speed and can take the proposed minimum curves. Replacing the regular breadboard with a PCB had a significant positive effect. It completely removed the need for wires that you'd find out of abundance on a breadboard. You can find on this PCB a microprocessor represented by an Arduino Pro Mini, connected to a motor driver and a reflectance sensor array. The motor driver controls the two micro metal gear motors that can rotate up to 3000 rotations per minute. In the battery holder, you can find the lithium polymer 7.4V battery, which directly powers the motor driver. 
It also supplies 5 volts to the Arduino and to the logic power of the motor driver, with the help of a voltage regulator. The circuit schematic can be found in the link in the description. Here can be seen the actual PCB with all the electronic components described earlier. To make the PCB, I used this EDI software. Designing wasn't so hard. To begin with, I made a circuit schematic to mark the order in which the electronic components connect. After that, thanks to this software, I have exported the schematic into the PCB design section. I can create a board outline, make the holes for the screws, place all components as I like and design the wiring. The last one can be done manually or using an offered AI, which makes your job easier. Having already the connection outline, I have chosen the first one, making it a two-layered PCB. After finalizing the design, you can preview the 3D model of your PCB. When exporting the model, there is an option to order it directly from their store. Five such boards cost $7 plus a low cost of $10 shipping, which took around two weeks from China to Romania. The idea behind the functionality of a line follower is pretty simple. The robot has implemented an algorithm that goes through two stages, the calibration and the running mode. In the first stage, the robot moves across the line so it can calibrate the sensor array. Next, in the running stage, the robot will function normally following the line with the help of calibrated sensors. In this model, I have used a QTR-8RC module sensor array, which contains 8 ER sensors. Each of these sensors returns a value based on the infrared light radiating from objects in its field of view. Therefore, when talking about a track with a black line and with a white surface, the sensor will differentiate between these two colors. So every sensor will give a low output when it detects reflected light, in case of white, and a high value when the emitted infrared light doesn't reflect from the black surface. Note that for this kind of sensor, these values aren't just 0 and 1. They may vary between 0 and 1000 depending on the amount of light emitted and detected. This sensor array comes with a library that can be used in Arduino to make it easier to read and implement when programming. In short, when the sensor detects the line, it will display a value between 0 and 7000, which usually indicates near which sensor is located. If it displays 3500, then it is between sensors 4 and 5. After the sensor array outputs the value of the position of the line, the Arduino will compare it with an exact value of 3500, which indicates the value when the line is on the center of the sensor array. The error will then be used as a correction to the speed of the motors. In summary, in the calibration stage, the robot needs to be placed on the track and then having pressed the calibrate button. It will then do half circles around itself so that every sensor will take values from the emitted light from the white surface and the black line. By doing so, each sensor will now know how to differentiate between different colors and shades, giving now better results. Now knowing how to work with the sensor array, we can implement it in the running stage. A concept that works would be the desire to reach the line with the middle of the sensor array of the robot, to be perfectly centered. It can be achieved by steering to the left or right, depending on the actual position of the line. But this method is insufficient, lacks speed, mobility, and the robot will struggle to stay on track. Taking things to the next level, this is where the PID control system takes place. This controller is suitable for such a robot because it continuously calculates an error value based on the difference between the desired set point, the center of the line, and the actual position. It applies an accurate and responsive correction to this error based on three terms, proportional, integral, and derivative, therefore the abbreviation. Each one has a unique influence on the controller output. Implementing all three will result in an elegant and fast drive style, where the robot can take all the curves. Let's talk about each term and its role. The proportional term is the error. 
As described earlier, it directly controls how to take the curves. If the value is greater, then the curve is narrower, so the robot will know what to do. And theoretically, everything sounds good on paper. Let's test what will happen if you only implement this term in the control system. As you can see, the robot cannot bring itself to a state of balance. And even worse, the robot can't even take narrow curves. Remember when I said the robot steers in a direction whenever it detects an error big enough? Well, when the robot returns to the center of the line, it doesn't mean its orientation is also parallel with the line. Consider this example case. Even on a straight line, the oscillations will accumulate, and the robot won't know how to return to an equilibrium state. The integral term. If you remove this from the control system, the robot will probably work fine. Let's see what happens if you add this term with the proportional 1 to the control system. The integral control term has a slightly change in how the robot moves on the track and takes the curves. It helps in reducing possible oscillations and gives a smooth movement. In short, it represents the sum of all errors over time and gives the accumulated offset that should have been corrected previously. As mentioned earlier, it improves but it doesn't change the control system. To remove the oscillations of the robot, we need another control term whose role will be correcting these errors. The derivative term represents the difference between the current error and the last error. This value usually high when the robot takes a curve. Therefore, this term can be described as the more rapid the change, the greater the controlling effect is. It means that, when it suddenly takes a high value, it will try to correct the spike that caused it, and usually happens when the robot enters from a straight line to a curve. Let's see what happens when you only use this value with the robot. As you can see, the robot is inconsistent. It performs well alone compared to the other two terms, but it is sloppy, and usually when it doesn't detect a need for correction, it will go full speed straight. Also, a disadvantage of this term is that the robot will slow down so that the derivative value can do its thing. Now you can see why a pit control system is so effective in the case of line followers. Each turn focuses on a specific aspect of control, which combined make a complex structure. The proportional value controls when and how the robot should steer in a direction. The integral value helps with giving a smooth effect to the movement of the robot. Finally, if your robot oscillates and struggles to take narrow curves and gets off track in case of them, implementing the derivative term is a good idea. But I haven't told you all about the pit control system. It wouldn't make sense for an error from a range of Itanger so big to transform via all three terms into a value of the motor speed that must take between 0 and 255. The solution is to scale those terms. To implement that, we multiply each with a constant, which we'll call gains. Each gain can take a different value. Its purpose is to set the intensity of the corresponding control term. For example, if you want your robot to have the sensor array centered on the line, this implies narrow curves, then the derivative gain should be a higher value. But that might result in too low speeds because the robot always tries to correct an error. Therefore, it is imperative to find the perfect set of values so that the robot can move on the track at high speed without getting off or oscillating. The way I have used to tune my robot was to give values to each constant. After testing the robot on the track, I've changed the gains depending on the result. To ease this operation, I have designed an Android phone app where you can directly communicate via serial with the robot. That means you can send the values of the control gains via Bluetooth, which is more flexible than changing the values in the Arduino code. As I have stated earlier in this video, every control term focuses on a specific role. Depending on what problem your robot has, you may assume one or more need to be modified. In the next part of this video, I'll show you different scenarios with the wrong values and how the robot functions in each case. First, we'll have our attention on the proportional control term. In this case, the ideal value for its gain would be 0.07. If this value is lesser than the original, the line follower takes the curves wider. 
That means the robot will no longer try to place itself on the center of the line, but rather have it anywhere near the center of the sensor array. As this value decreases, this portion will get larger. At some point, if the proportional gain is too low, the robot will get off the track. Of course, if we increase this value past the original one, the robot will try to put the line in a smaller portion of the sensor array. At some point, this portion will be so short that it will try to position the line perfectly at the center of the sensor array, at position 3500. As it can be seen, the line follower will try to get to that point, resulting in oscillations. Because the integral term doesn't have a noticeable impact on the control system, I will not discuss its tuning. Next, we'll move on to the derivative term. The ideal value for its gain would be around 0.7 for this case. When the derivative gain is lesser than the desired value, it will not effectively correct the error, resulting in oscillations and getting the robot off the track when taking narrow curves. In case of a higher derivative value, the robot will try to correct errors that should be ignored, trying to get the line to the center of the sensor array. This will result in lower speeds, however, the robot will remain on track. We have seen how the robot behaves for each control gain taken wrong. Let's see what happens when both values are taken wrong, for example the robot is getting easily off track. To correct this error, first you need to focus on the proportional value by increasing it, as it is the only value that will slightly work alone in a control system. Then you can focus on the derivative one. When these two values are greater than they should be, both of them will try to get to a perfect position of the line to the sensor array which would be the center. In this case, they both need to be decreased to the point where the line follower will run smoothly. A trick you can use is to set the derivative gain to zero and observe how the robot behaves when it only uses the proportional term. In some cases, maybe you only need to decrease the derivative one. The pit control system plays a significant role in making the perfect robot. But it isn't the only parameter to take into consideration. For example, even with a pit system tuned, the speed of the motors might be the cause if your robot doesn't take narrow curves. It needs to be adjusted. Some improvements I would consider for this robot would be decreasing the length of the PCB. It will help in taking narrow curves easier at higher speeds. Also it solves the problem of the motor spinning at 60% of the maximum speed. Another adjustment I would consider would be the replacement of the lithium polymer battery with another type or one with higher power. Using the robot for long times or forgetting it open will deplete most of it, making it not rechargeable. So having all said, I hope that this video helped you to understand the basics of making a line follower robot. And of course, you can find all the schematics and codes in the link in the description. If you do still have any questions, I'll gladly answer in the comments section. Bye bye!